What's up guys, my name is Michael and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to go over something called graphs, alright? Uh, I'm going to make this short video really short because I don't really have time to go over uh, the, the dynamic programming because dynamic programming is a huge, huge thing and then there's like a ton of algorithms we could talk about for dynamic programming. So let's talk about graphs first because graphs are the most easiest and I don't have that much time to talk about it. Alright, uh, I'm also going to, I'm going to, I'm buying this pad also and so then I could start writing on the computer instead of just doing pen pen and paper but for now let's just do by pen and paper okay so what is a graph let's think about this okay if you were to let's say we had a bunch of houses like a bunch of houses like uh, this is a house okay and then there's another house here and then there's a third house here and then there's a fourth house here and then there's like um and this could go on and on and forever like we have a bunch of houses it's like a huge neighborhood right well let's say i want to go from one house to another right but I can't really go there, right? I can't really go from one house to another um, because that would be trespassing through certain different areas, right? So the only way I could go there is through their sidewalks or roads, right? So let's just draw some sidewalks and roads or roads to, to connect these houses, okay? Now, part of the reason of why graphs exist, so just saying these are, these are sidewalks, by the way. Uh, sorry for my awful drawing but these are just sidewalks okay sidewalks or roads or whatever now let's say i want to get from he this house to here well how am i going to do it all right if you think about it like i can't just i can't cut across it normally i could cut a cut across the neighborhood right but i have to go through every single road and i have to go through only roads right i can't like teleport right so that's the thing why we have graphs all right so graphs uh what are we going to do is we're going to represent each each house as like a, a node or a circle or whatever it's called right so i'm going to redraw this graph and i'll label it as vertices so one two three four five six okay so they, they could be in these uh the vertices could be any number and any name whatever it is right these are the circles are just vertices of the graph okay and then what am i going to do i'm going to connect all of them like this okay so if i were to represent uh whoops sorry uh -huh. Let's just add a road here, right? Just, just cause I don't feel like erasing. But yeah, let's say we have this graph like this. Okay, so now um, how are we gonna get from one, uh, one, uh, one house to another, right? And let's assume that uh, there's some distances in through every single sidewalk or every single road. So let's say I have like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? Then how am I gonna get from one side to the other side, the shortest path? Right, the shortest way to, of going there. Well, that's what graphs are for. And there's a ton of algorithms about graphs explaining how this works, and there's graph theory and all the other stuff. But today, I'm just going to show you how to represent a graph. Okay? So let's say I have a graph like this, and I want to represent this in programming, in code. Okay? So how am I going to represent this? There's two ways to represent it. One is using adjacency matrix, which is like this adjacency matrix. Uh, I don't know how to spell, so I'll call it, yeah. It's a, so uh, what is an adjacency matrix? Um, this is probably the most easiest, well, one of the easiest way to represent it though. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna label each, uh, we're gonna have a row and column. So it's basically like a matrix. And we're gonna lay, put every single vertices that, that's possible here. So in this graph, uh, what are the names of every single vertice? We'll have one, two, three, four, five, six, right? So I'm gonna put that one, two, three, four, five, six. And then the column, the rows and columns, I'm going to put the same thing, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. It's just the name of every single vertice. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And what am I going to do? I'm going to put a zero or one for every single one of these. Okay. So for whatever neighbor at a certain vertice, I'm going to put a zero or one. Okay. Um, I'm going to put a one if it's a neighbor there and zero if there's no neighbors there, right? So for, let's say this vertice one, uh, one, what are the neighbors of one? Uh, it's two and three, right? That's how, this is how we're going to represent it in code, right? Uh, the neighbors of one are two and three. So I'm going to put a one for vertice two and three in this value of, of one. So I'm going to put a one for both here, one, two, and three. And then I'm gonna put the, I'll put the rest as zeros, okay? Because there's no those neighbors are not there right there's no there's no there's no connection between um one and one or, or one and four one and four right there's no there's no road or path there 
right? It's not a neighbor. So that's why I'm gonna put a zero for for one and four. And there's no na there's no path from like there's no it's a, uh, five's not a neighbor of one, right? See, there's there's no path, so I'm gonna put zero for that. Six is not a neighbor of one either, right? It's not like a neighbor. It's not right next to it. Okay. And then we'll do the same thing for the rest. So let's look at two. Um, what are the neighbors of two? One, three, four. That's all there are. It's like whatever neighbors around it. So I'm gonna put one at one, three, and four. And I'm gonna put a zero for the rest. Okay, uh, what are the neighbors of three? So at three, let's put, uh, there's way more neighbors at three. So there's one, two, th four, five. So I'll put that one, put one, two, four, five all ones, and then the rest are zeros. And then what about the neighbors at four? Neighbors at four is, uh, let's see, two, three, four, five, and six. The neighbors of four. So it's whatever surrounding, whatever vertice, right? So two, three, five, and six. So I'm gonna put that. Two, three, five, oh, screw it, damn. Two, three, two, three, five, and six. Okay, and then I'll put the rest of zeros. And then, um, for five, let's see five. Uh, neighbors of five are three, four, and six. So I'm gonna put ones for there. Three, four, and six. Okay, and then I'll put zeros for the rest. Uh, let's pull out the neighbors of six. Uh, that's just four and five. So I'm gonna put four as one, and then five as one, okay? And then uh, the rest are zeros. Okay, so that's how you would represent this as an adjacency matrix. You just have one for whatever, uh, Row and then uh, one for whatever neighbor it is, if there's a neighbor at it, and zero if there's if it's not a neighbor. Okay, so that's all you have to do for an adjacency matrix. To represent this in code, you could just have use a 2D matrix, um, 2D mat yeah, 2D matrix with a bunch of rows and columns, and just have ones and zeros. Okay, at that time. Um, let's look at another way to represent it. Is using an, something called adjacency list, and this is basically just having a list of all the neighbors of it instead of putting ones and zeros for every neighbor. So we're gonna do the same thing. So let's say I have like um, one, uh, so for every for every vertice we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm gonna put a label vertices, one, two, three, four, five, six. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have a list for every single one of these. Um, yeah, so this is like an, uh, an adjacency list. And I'm going to have a list of all the neighbors surrounding it, right? So what are the one's neighbors, right? One's neighbors are two and three. So that'll be two, three, this is like a list. Um, what's two's neighbors? Uh, let's just look at the matrix and see. Okay, two's neighbors are one, three, four, right? One, three, and four. Uh, three's, three's, uh, three's neighbors are one, two, four, five. So I'm gonna have one, two, four, five, be in the list of three. Four's neighbors, what are four's neighbors? Two, three, five, six. So I'm gonna have two, three, five, six as a neighbor, two, three, five, and six. And then five's neighbors are three, four, and five. So I'm gonna have that. Three, four, five. Oh wait, five, three, four, six, my bad. Three, four, six, six neighbors are four and five, and that's it. Okay, so that's that's how you would represent this in adjacency list because basically for every single vertice or ver vertex, whatever um, node th that it is, we're going to have a list of all its neighbors. So yeah, so one's neighbors are two, three, so on and so forth. So that, that's the that's the two ways of representing this. To represent it in code, this you you would use a two D matrix, right? So you could use like a a two D array, right? And then for this one, you could just have like an array of all the names of every single vertex, and then you represent them with a, a, a list. It could be any list, it could be like a, it could be a link list, it could be a, it could be an, another array also. Uh, it could be whatever it is. So you would have like an array of lists. All right, so an array of lists. So in in Java, you could use like an array of um, array lists. You could use this in Java. Uh, you could use array of um, vectors in C++. That's it, yeah. So that's how you represent both of these. Hope you guys enjoy this video. It's a pretty quick video. Uh, I'm sorry, I forgot to move this up. Yeah, uh, that's pretty much it. Rate, comment, subscribe. I'll check you guys later. Peace.